the the latest situation that happened at University of Texas, there's a lot of um, a lot of time and effort being put into response for those kind of situations. But every time something like that happens, it seems like it's with individuals that you would have never considered would do something like that. So what what do we do as far as prevention versus response, or you know what's going on in terms of discussions at, at institutional levels on that front? Yeah, so if you, if you haven't heard about uh, what happened at Texas, there was a, a young man who came onto campus with a firearm, a, a rifle, discharged some rounds, went into the library. Uh, it's not clear if additional rounds were shot in the library other than he actually ended his own life. Um, in the midst of all that, you, you can imagine there's a ton of information that begins to fly around. Nobody was certain about what was going on. One of the things that we've dealt with, and they certainly did there, is we are in an instant information age, and everybody pulls out their device, whatever it may be, and they begin to text. And so information begins to fly around, makes it difficult to contain a situation. But uh, we have, uh, Actually, after the Virginia Tech incident occurred, the state put together two different task force groups, and both of those groups obviously came up with recommendations, uh, a lot of them very similar. One of them had to do with threat assessment, which is what you're talking about. Um, and we've uh, put a lot of energy in that on campus. Jonathan talked about uh, the emergency group there with student affairs. That has been in place for a number of years and has worked very well. Um, but we felt we need to firm up the uh, the other side. You know, we, we've got a lot of the kids here. Uh, we also have a lot of employees here. And so we've worked very hard with HR to put together a threat assessment uh, in that area as well. So we do have a mechanism for threat assessment or, or for employees, faculty, students, everybody. And, uh, and encourage people to contact. In fact, one of the things I wanted to talk about earlier that I didn't touch on was our emergency web page. Uh, anytime that any kind of emergency occurs on our campus, the way to get information is to go to our emergency website, and that is alert Carolina, one word, .unc.edu. And if you'll go to that page, it talks a lot about our preparation for events, but it also talks about uh, numbers that you should call if you have a concern about a student or employee, and, and that will get the information to these groups so we can start to address it. Um, and, and again, that, that website, very important. It's got anything you would need to know about our emergency communication system. You can actually hear what the siren sounds like there. There are a lot of neat things on that website, but uh, but we have been very active in our threat assessment. Yeah, let me just add sort of more pre preparatory to those those events. One of one of the keys of I think this university's response and that, that many other universities are adapting, but we, we've kind of just been able to improve, is always be looking for ways to identify sort of precursors. Um, to events, no one has the crystal ball, the ability to, to project specifically what actions any individual might take. But at the same time, rather than just sort of uh, siloing these, these issues and having one person address it, one of the benefits of the Emergency Evaluation Action Committee is it's populated by a lot of different disciplines who come together to talk specifically about an event. That might be as simple as a campus disruption, somebody who's acting out in class. Uh, it may be somebody that has gotten a an either an existing or, or um, newly diagnosed mental health condition. It might just be violent behavior that, that we have seen that we were concerned about escalation. And so uh, the folks from public safety, folks from uh, health services, my office, academic affairs, uh, they all sit on that committee. And there's a, th a very thorough vetting. Uh, that sometimes can involve needing to take some, some immediate action, um, including maybe an involuntary withdrawal in extreme cases where we condition their return upon getting the necessary help before they could return. But a lot of times it's just an intervention on the front end. It, it's making sure they're connected with and following through. Our office um, the last couple of years has had a case manager, which I think is a, f a critical addition um, to what we do in the Dean of Students Office to ensure that we have follow-up, that things don't drop through the cracks. Um, sometimes we spend so much time focusing on stabilizing the condition that comes to our attention that it could be easy if we didn't have processes in place to simply ignore that we need to do some follow-up, make sure they got to the counseling center, make sure that they are following up with the appointments that they're supposed to keep. 
And so that process works uh, very well. Uh, but it still relies upon that sort of phrase you heard earlier, the sort of see something, say something. A lot of times the reason we're able to get involved and intervene is because a roommate, a suite mate, a professor, a parent, uh, just another interested member of the community steps forward and says, I have a concern about so and so. And so we hope that they'll recognize we're going to deal with that promptly, responsibly, confidentially, uh, but in a manner designed to ensure the safety of the campus community to the best of our ability. Let me just quickly add something to that. Uh, let me just quickly add something to that in a more global sense. Um, I think we do an excellent job of prevention when we can see stuff. Uh, but generally speaking, when you look at a lot of these shooting incidents, you have people that as you go back and take a look at them, you find were isolated or were disaffected uh, and things like that. So part of our prevention is actually these other things that we've been talking about is reducing disaffection, uh, reducing inaccessibility of programs and access issues to students, and generally increasing the health uh, and well-being uh, of our student body because the more that we can do that, the more engaged we can keep all of our students, uh, the less likely, uh, not only the less likely is something like that to happen, but the more obvious uh, will it tend to be as you see it sorting to, to, to begin itself and then we have lots of stuff in place to help stop it. So there's all kind of individual things that we're talking about, but also in general, this whole general notion of increasing wellness all over campus and, and particularly the accessibility and, and, and inclusivity issues uh, have a lot to do with keeping disaffection out of our students. Dr. Payne, let me. I want to address that too, but I know all of you are cur curious about when I came to UNC since the chief baited you. <laughs> it was 37 years ago, and he makes a joke that I stood for Silent Sam as a model, but I'm taller and it did not happen, so I want to dispel that right away. <laughs> I didn't. Thank you very much, Chief. To your question, um, the and you've heard comments about uh, uh, if you see something, say something. It is a it is it is stitched into our organization. We're trying to stitch it into the to the into, into the fabric of the university because it is absolutely key that we have forty thousand police officers out here on campus that can see things, eyes and ears. And it started up in New York on the subway trying to, try, to, trying to get people to call in about terrorism. And it's pretty well widespread throughout the country. Now, how do we weave that in? Um, my officers, I hire not only teachers, but I hire warriors. Now, that's not a good thing to say on a college campus, but that just means that they're brave and they're competent and they go into danger. That's what they do. That's what I want. But they're also very good teachers. And that's what they have to do at the university more than they do in uh, municipalities, so to speak. And so in speaking to them, even my staff yesterday, I was asking them, how are you stitching in this, this uh, if you see something, say something? Well, we give presentations from a film that was given to us by Homeland Security on shots fired. And I don't know if anybody in here has had the opportunity to see that film on shots fired. Uh, I would invite you to set that, uh, that opportunity up. It's phenomenal what that does teach. And it basically goes through a scenario of somebody coming into a dorm or somebody coming into a business or somebody going across campus with a gun and people don't freeze and you actually hear the pop, pop, pop and they understand, oh, wait a minute, they don't stop and hesitate, what's that noise? It teaches them how to react to it how to, and, it, and it's, it gets very specific. But layered on top of that is when my officers then weave in the, the uh, if you see something, say something because most of these things, they won't be under the radar screen for Jonathan and I at the EEAC they're using, it's what we don't know that scares the heck out of us. It really is. And, and, and a lot of these students that could potentially be a problem that we've seen on a lot of the campuses and a lot of the cities for that matter, um, they have given signals to somebody. They've said something to somebody. And if we get all the students on campus to really push, to, to really buy into that, they're our eyes and ears and maybe we can help prevent some of this from happening and intervene with uh, health and wellness and, 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 and Jonathan and his staff because we are a strong, strong partnership. But that's how we weave it out there. We, we give a double presentation. My, my officers love to teach. Some of them are better than others, but they love to have the audience. Uh, they find students are now more, uh, have a stronger appetite than they did probably when I was coming through here to sit and listen to somebody in uniform, tell them how to be safe. But it's a partnership with the students and we really push that out there. We care a whole lot about that, that partnership. And that's what it requires to be a good cop on this campus. I hope that helps.